Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Ruth chapter 4 verse 6, Hebrews chapter 8 verse 8, and Zechariah chapter 3 verse 10. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you Father God for covering us. Thank you for blessing us. You are faithful. Lord, help us to be as you are. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, Ruth chapter four, verse six. Then the Redeemer said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I impair my own inheritance. Take my right of redemption yourself, for I cannot redeem it. All right, and of course, this is the first Redeemer, right? The unnamed Redeemer, the one who represents the old covenant, right? The old covenant and the law. Um, so we know that the law was unable to redeem man, right? It was unable to produce righteousness in man. And so it, it, it couldn't do it. Right. And so this is what the first redeemer represents. Now, Boaz, he's the second redeemer. Um, you know, the first redeemer is closer in blood relationship, as we've talked about before, um, to, to Ruth Naomi and, um, her, her old husband, her widow, yeah, she was a widow, her, her husband, her husband who had passed away, he was a closer blood relationship to them, right? But the second redeemer who was Boaz, he was farther um, in, away in, in relationship and yet relationship, he was closer, right? He had already begun to cover um, Ruth, right? And Naomi, he had already begun to give them extra and watch out for them, right? As they were in poverty, as they were impoverished, right? God had seen their state and he had sent a redeemer, right? It wasn't the one who was closest in blood relationship, the one that represents the law. It was the one who was in relationship with Ruth and Naomi even before the covering occurred, right? And so God knows that the law can't redeem us. Following as many rules as we can, you know, that's not going to redeem us, right? Doing these motions of going here, going there, being a part of this group, being a part of that group, making sure that we appear in church every Sunday and everyone sees us as we do the things that we do, that stuff is not going to redeem us, right? Only Christ can redeem us. Only Christ is the answer for sin, right? Now, doing deeds, the deeds that God sent us to do, those are important, right? But the Redeemer is the one that provides righteousness, right? That justification that we need, the blood um, provides us access and entry into the presence of God, Right. And so this one is speaking of the old covenant, the the one that could not redeem. Right. It says, then the Redeemer said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I impair my own inheritance. Take my right of redemption yourself, for I cannot redeem it. And remember, he was putting things before people right? His own inheritance before um, the love of people. So we need to be sure that we are, are reaching out to Christ, right? Christ and love is the most important thing. God has a new covenant that is for us and it's going to cover us and we need to walk in his ways. Amen. All right, let's look at the second verse, Hebrews chapter eight, verse eight. For he finds fault with them when he says, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will establish a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. All right. And so this is speaking of the new covenant, right? This new promise, the better promises, right? And, and this advocate that we have in Christ Jesus, it says, for he finds fault with them when he says, so meaning that there was a need 
for better, right? There was a need for following and walking with God. There was a need for the establishment of a relationship, right? And so here it says, for he finds fault with them when he says, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will establish a new covenant. So meaning that it wasn't there at the time, but it was coming, right? And this is the Old Testament it's quoting from. And so it says, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will establish a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. And so he knew that this new covenant was necessary. He knew that they were falling short right? That these animal sacrifices was not enough, right? Because they they could not keep, they could not stay in keeping and in walking with God. They were, they were in need of an advocate. They were in need of more, right? They were in need of a redeemer. And so this is the, the speaking about um, Christ coming and this new covenant that was to come. Amen. All right, let's look at the third verse. Zechariah chapter three, verse 10. In that day, declares the Lord of hosts, every one of you will invite his neighbor to come under his vine and under his fig tree. All right. And so this is such a beautiful one because um, it, it does. I, I love the way he does these third verses. And, you know, okay, so here in Zechariah chapter three, um, it's talking about Joshua, the high priest, right? He's standing before God. Um, Zechariah is having a vision of him standing before God in these filthy, disgusting um, clothes, these vestments or, or um, attire that he's supposed to be clean, right? Because this is like, I think it's during the time like of Yom Kippur. And so he is standing before God and his clothes are disgusting. And just think, I think the interpretation is that there's feces, basically. Like if you were to look it up, it, it, it comes down to basically saying, he was in entirely covered in feces. I heard this as a teaching once um, by Timothy Keller. And so he was he was standing before God and he had these robes on that were just filthy and disgusting. And then to his right was the accuser, right? It was Satan. Satan was standing there and he was ready to accuse him. And so um, he, they were standing before God and God rebuked Satan, right? He didn't, he didn't rebuke the high priest. He rebuked Satan, right? And so, you know, the high priest, in order to get ready to come before God, he has to clean himself and clean himself and clean himself and clean himself in front of the people that I think there's a screen there and he goes behind the screen and he washes himself. And so imagine all of this washing for the whole week um, and, and getting ready to go before God. And yet he's standing there with these, these, filthy, disgusting robes, right? And and yet God does not accuse him. He he rebukes Satan. And and so, you know, that is such a beautiful picture of the fact that God cares about us, right? He cares about our state and he knows that the enemy is busy trying to accuse us. That's why he provided Jesus. That's why he provided an advocate in Jesus. Then he he speaks to the angel of the Lord and he he basically takes the, the filthy robes off of him and he gives him new robes and he redresses him and he takes the filthy hat off and he puts on the new hat and, and, and he, the new turban, um, and he redresses him, right? That's so beautiful how um, how God did that. Because when the Lord was speaking to Satan, he said, is this not a brand plucked from the fire, right? Like he was like, no, this is my child, right? You don't, he, it was, it was I love that, that this chapter, but you know, 
God sees us. He sees when we are in need of the advocate. That's why he sent his son, right? They, we were falling short. We were falling short. We were falling short. And you know what? He sent a redeemer that was willing to cover us. He sent us a new covenant with better promises, things that would help us and not harm us. Christ was there to advocate. And not only that, he, he ministered to him, right? The angel of the Lord ministered to him and he told him, if you keep um, the Lord's charge, right? If you keep his charge and you walk in his ways, then he was going to do some mighty things for him, right? And so what were those things? Um, there were three things that thinking back on what the angel of the Lord said, it was that he was going to um, make him ruler of um, part of the temple. He was going to give him access even amongst his brethren who were there. And then he was also going to do it was there was a third thing and I can't think of it right now but um hold on just a second there was a third thing that he told um that he told Joshua that he was going to do so he said that he was going to give him rule charge and access he was going to give him rule over his house he was going to give him um charge over the courts and he was going to give him access even amongst his brethren wow that's amazing so in even though you know he he was filthy before God. God had an advocate for him. God saw him. God saw his efforts and everything. And God sees your efforts. God sees what you're doing. And he sees the accuser. He sees how the enemy is, is constantly accusing you, right? And that's why he sent Jesus. He sent an advocate who will redress you and cleanse you and make you perfect. And, and all you need to do is continue to walk in his ways, right? Keep his charge. God has given you a charge, right? God has given you something to watch over, a baby to keep, right? And we need to make sure that we're not allowing anything to touch our baby, right? Nothing should stop you from going forth and doing the will of the father. And so, you know, as God wants us to to walk with him, we need to walk with him. We need to keep the charge. Amen. We need to do um, the works that he sent us to do. Right. And realize that he's got you covered. He's going to cleanse you. He's going to minister to you and he's going to rebuke the devil. Hallelujah. That was, that was amazing. I love that part of Zechariah. And then for this verse, it says in that day declares the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. So this is God speaking in that day declares the Lord of hosts. Every one of you will invite his neighbor to come under his vine and under his fig tree. And so remember when on Yom Kippur, when the high priest would go and he would perform the, the ritual sacrifices and go to um, be in God's presence, then when he was done, he would invite his friends and the young maidens and, and the people to his own vineyard. And they would have like a feast. They would have a festivity, right? They would enjoy each other and and just hang out right and so here it says in that day declares the lord of hosts every one of you will invite his neighbor to come under his vine and under his fig tree why because we're all gonna have an inheritance we're all gonna be able to walk in in fullness and riches and wealth right when the lord is 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 ruling and reigning we're we're going to have an inheritance why cuz we've kept his charge and we've walked in his ways god wants us to walk in his ways amen keep his charge he's already provided us this new covenant he's provided us the coverage he's provided us an advocate 
right, against the accuser. God sees you. He sees when you're trying and you're still not making it. God has a way for you. Walk in his ways. Amen. Continue to keep his charge. Continue to do what he says do. He has blessings in store for you. Every one of us who have worked for Christ, who have who have done what we've done for the Lord and kept his charge and walked in his ways, he he's going to bless us indeed. Right. He's not just going to give us eternal life. He's going to give us access. Hallelujah. He's going to give us blessings. He's going to give us fruitfulness. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for your blessings, Lord God, you are rich, you are full, you are light, you are life, you are our advocate. Jesus, we don't have anybody else in heaven beside thee, O oh Lord. Thank you for Holy Spirit. Thank you for speaking to our hearts and giving us inspiration to keep marching on, to walk in your ways, to keep your charge, Lord God. Help us to be people who are so full and so rich when we get to your heavenly places, Lord God. Help us to rule and reign, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for this new covenant. Thank you for defending us against the accuser of the brethren. In Jesus' mighty name, we love you, God. Amen. All right, you guys, take care and be blessed.